test on the mean of single population. Our objectives for this are choose the appropriate test statistics in comparing sample and population. Second, know how to determine the critical values of the test statistics. Third, draw conclusion based from or based on the sample data. We are going to use the z-test. For known variance, we have here this formula on the left and on the right, the z-test. Whenever we do not know the variance, which is most or mostly that is the case, and we are going to use the standard deviation of the sample instead of using the population standard deviation. So let us proceed to some examples. A study shows that the average score of applicants who took the entrance examination was 45 with a standard deviation of 5.15. The question here is, is there a reason to believe that the present examinees is better than the previous results if a random sample of 36 applicants showed an average score of 47.34? And we are going to use the, the 0 0.01 level of significance, meaning to say uh, we want to be 99% sure or confident with our uh, claim or with our hypothesis testing. To start with, let us have the hypothesis mean as 45. Okay, so our first step is to state the null and alternative hypothesis. So how are we going to do that? So here we have the guidelines in constructing or stating the null and alternative hypothesis as well as when to use it and the test statistic as well as the decision rule. Now, here we have the hypothesis test for population and uh, the sample size must be greater than or equal to 30. The population need not to be normally distributed but the sample will be approximately normal. Here, the null hypothesis is stating that the true mean is equal to the hypothesized mean, or n is greater than or equal to 30. And these are the possible alternative hypotheses. On the left, we have uh, mean, the true mean is not equal to the hypothesized mean, mean is greater than, and the last one is mean is less than the hypothesized mean. Since a while ago, the given is, or we are asked if the present examinees are better than the previous results. Hence, we have here the alternative hypothesis as mu is greater than 45, while the null hypothesis is uh, mu is equal to the hypothesized mean, which is in this case 45. Okay? Uh, orally, or in words, null hypothesis means there is no difference between the, the present mean and the previous result. Well, the alternative hypothesis is the present mean is greater than the previous result. So, step number two is to specify the level of significance alpha sample size n, sample mean x bar and population or sample standard deviation. We are given the alpha as 0 0.01 or the level of significance. We are also given the sample size as 36. We are also given the sample mean which is 47.34 and the population standard deviation as 5.15. Since it is known, we are going to use the population standard deviation. So choose the test statistic. We are going to use this 
we are going to use the population standard deviation instead of sample because it is known. The population standard deviation is known. And we have here step number four to determine the critical region and state the decision rule. If we're going to recall this slide, it tells us here that if our alternative hypothesis is the true mean is greater than the hypothesized mean, therefore our decision rule will be uh, z or the computed z must be greater than or equal to the critical value of z. And the test, test statistic that we are going to use, as I have said, is this one, or on the right portion. But since the population standard deviation is, un, or is known, therefore, instead of using S, we use sigma. So here we have the possible critical values for Z statistic. At 0 0.05 level and 0 0.01 level of confidence for both uh, one-tilled and two-tilled tests. As I have said a while ago, uh, we have a one-tailed test because the alternative hypothesis is or the mean is greater than the hypothesized mean. So we have a one-tailed test and the level of significance is 0 0.01. So it goes to show that the critical value is this one. 2.330 Now, again, determine the critical region and state the decision rule. So we have to reject the null hypothesis based on the previous slide earlier if the computed value of z is greater than or equal to 2.330 which is the critical value of z. And we are not going to reject the null hypothesis if Z or the computed Z is less than 2.330. So here we have an illustration in a normal curve of what we have. The rejection region here is uh, to the right of 2.33 and the non-rejection region is to the left. It tells us that if the computed Z falls under this critical region on the right or rejection region on the right it goes to show that we must reject the null hypothesis and if the computed z falls on the non-rejection region we are not going to reject the null hypothesis now we have here the computation what is x bar the sample mean and do you still remember the sample mean it is 47.34 minus the hypothesized mean which is 45 all over 5.15 as the population standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size which is in this case 36 and if we're going to input this on our calculator we will arrive at z equals 2.726 now let us look at this. Since z equals 2.726, it is greater than, yes, it is greater than the critical value of, or critical value which is 2.330. It is obvious. Now, the question here is, are we going to reject the null hypothesis or are we not to reject the null hypothesis? To guide you in decision making, we have here the illustration once again. But now we have here the 2.726 and we all know that it is located at here. Okay. And as I have said a while ago, this one or this part, right part, is the rejection region. It goes to show that or it tells us that we must reject the null hypothesis and it also uh, supported by our decision rule which is reject the null hypothesis if the z computed z is greater than 2.330 so our decision will be the null hypothesis is rejected means or if we're going to recall 
appear to reject this, there is no difference between the present mean and the previous result. That is what we are rejecting. Now, we accept this alternative hypothesis which is the present mean is greater than the previous result. Or, shall I say, it implies that there is a sufficient evidence to claim that the present examinees are better than the previous results.